welcome back to Pixel Village and I'm Radha Krishna. This video is a special one. It's definitely special for us at Pixel Village and I'm sure it'll be special for many who are watching. It may be interesting for many, but it's not meant for many. It's definitely not for the mobile photographer, the beginner photographer, the amateur photographer and majority of the professional photographer. But it definitely will be interesting for them but it's actually meant for that absolutely demanding uh, commercial photographer, that Puritan photographer who's a, probably an avid enthusiast. This video is for them. Do you know what it is about? Let me just pull over because it's not, this is a beast. What I'm going to show it to you is also a beast. Let me pull over and show it to you what that is. Okay, let me put it in the park. All right. Okay, is the all new, most awaited, one of the finest. I can't find a superlative for this. The Fujifilm GFX 100. The first 102 megapixel mirrorless camera. Like I said, the first in the world. Well, what we're going to do is to put it through its paces here. And uh, well, you come to a conclusion whether it is worth all that hype that it created. Let's get into the shot. I found a place right ahead. That's where we are going. We stop there and do a small shoot. So come with me. This is what happens when you have friends in the right place. Thanks to our friends in uh, American Muzzle, we have this beauty, not beauty, the beast here. It's a 6.7 liter, 550 BHP monster truck. Well, probably the few, one of the few, in fact, this is the first right hand driven Denali from GMC brought to India with Indian specs. So if you're someone who wants to own something like this, go on to uh, www.americanmuzzle.in and you'll be surprised about the stuff that is in offer there. And this is what happens when your friends in a big camera corporation trust you with their beast, the 100 megapixel GFX 100. They also invited us uh, for the official launch of this camera and during the Fujikina 2019. And yes, we are here to put it to its paces. And of course, what a combination, a beast, another beast. Let's see how it uh, matches up. Um, well, to tell you, I've been a professional photographer, a commercial photographer. Uh, I came to Bombay to become one and eventually ended up becoming one. Throughout my career, I've been using medium format cameras. It started with a Hasselblad 503CW as most of the guys who started in the 90s would have started their career with. And uh, when the digital revolution started towards the beginning of 2000, 
of course I managed to get my first uh, 16 megapixel medium format camera they, those were the hybrid cameras so I really know the pain of working with a medium format camera in outdoor situations uh, perfectly fine indoors outdoors it becomes a little bit of a pain the story did not change much though you know it is almost 17 years have passed uh, you know since I got my first uh, digital camera uh, it still is cumbersome still is painfully slow uh, it you, you can't really go and do a run and gun shoot with it and in this day and age where the whole photography commercial photography scenario is changing where the client is becoming so demanding they want fast results they want you to shoot more situations per day and things like that you can't afford to work slow they still want very high resolution i know personally including me many people have shifted to the full frame format and continued giving those 47 megapixels and 36 megapixels but we know that it can't really match up to the medium format and in comes Fuji filling that gap between the medium format and the full frame well they are taking the game up with a 100 megapixel camera they always had a medium format camera which was on 50 megapixel but this one is really going to be a game changer well all those things that you had prayed for okay as a photographer in the current generation commercial or otherwise is I think is in it the first thing wanted was ease of use so here it is this is a mirrorless in fact it's comparable to some of these uh, full-bodied mirrorless cameras me as a commercial photographer who used to depend heavily on a medium format camera had a few things as a wish list for the medium format camera I wanted them to be seen implemented in those uh, medium format cameras the first and the foremost one was more number of focusing points the one which we used to use had just one right that to right in the middle and we had to physically shift the camera if the subject is off the center focus and recompose and shoot every time which you know is a pain most of the occasion well this camera had 425 focusing point filling the whole screen for you one second I wanted to see more speed for those cameras but just because the way it was constructed it had a mirror inside it had shutters and all that the speed was restricted to you know two or three frames a second this can shoot up to five frames a second with continuous focusing that too it can even do an eye focusing the next one was image stabilization we all got spoiled on the way with in-camera stabilization and optical image stabilization and all that and in the medium format camera it wasn't available well not any longer it is available here it's got a five axis in body stabilization for its uh, sensor and coupled with the lenses which has uh, ios which is optical image stabilization you can get up to five stops of stabilization which is amazing which is actually uh, small format or full frame territory okay so these are my major ones yes another one is the battery life so Fuji has given two batteries um, inside combined uh, capacity is 800 frames so for a commercial photographer it's 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 very uh, good and the next one is hold on I, I don't think I should test the patience of the rain gods let's get into the shoot see the results for yourself we'll come back and talk about it more let's get into the shoot okay here we go okay the first situation the beast shooting the beast all right so we set here and i'm going to ask uh, you know the car to be driven on the bridge you know to a certain extent that we have uh, planned i'm using the gfx 100 and i have the 63 100 ISO which is the base ISO it has a very wide native ISO range which is the uh, characteristics of a CMOS sensor so from 100 ISO to 12,800 ISO 
they say it is native, which means uh, not much of image degradation is likely to happen as you approach the higher ISOs like 12,800. However, I have, since there is bright uh, sun, I've decided to shoot at 100 ISO, which is the lowest base ISO. Okay, so let me set ready. Okay, the second shot, uh, we moved the car up a little, uh, we all, camera also moved a little and we're trying to get this uh, canopy uh, to kind of uh, frame the, uh, you know, the truck. So let's take this shot. I'm using, I'm shooting raw, I'm shooting 16-bit raw, by the way, this has a 16-bit raw, humongous file size, uh, which means you have a lot of elbow room to work with on your highlight and your shadow. One. Second, I have activated the electronic shutter because I'm not using a cable. I'm not, there's no mirror to release. Uh, I've deactivated the mechanical shutter entirely on electronic shutter. And when you work on electronic shutter, guess what? You got a maximum of one by 16,000th of a second as your shutter speed. Now digest that. Let me take a shot. Another situation, uh, so far we have not shot uh, moving, uh, you know, objects. So, no models today, I am the model and I'm going to be walking towards uh, Aditya who's got the camera. Camera is on continuous focus mode. Uh, so now, I cannot shoot 16-bit and continuous, uh, you know, burst mode. I have to switch to 14-bit, which I have done and I'm going to walk towards Aditya. Right? Steady? Ready? Okay. Okay, so images looks pretty nice. Yes, we have missed one or two in between, uh, but yes, we more or less got everything. One thing I'd like to caution you, while working in continuous um, autofocus mode, you must work with only mechanical shutter because in the smaller camera, the APS-C camera that Fuji has, the X-T3, you can work with electronic shutter even in continuous autofocus because the uh, the sensor is very small. Here the sensor is much wider, many, many times wider. Uh, hence, the electronic shutter takes a lot of time to kind of record the image, thereby occasionally cre creating kind of skewing of the images, uh, like the shutter effect, the rolling shutter effect even comes in the still images too. So be warned about it uh, on this camera. When you are on continuous autofocus mode, work with mechanical shutter only. The light outside has gone a little bad, so let me use this time to explain to you the video capabilities of GFX 100. The traditional 35mm, the projection standard, is close to APS-C. The Super 35 too is APS-C, it's more APS-C than full frame. Full frame is almost one and a half times bigger than the APS-C. The medium format, the true medium format as a still photographer knows, is way bigger, many times bigger than the full frame. The large format, the true large format for a still photographer is even bigger and starts at 4x5, 
inches. The large format which Fuji refers to is actually closer to the Arri Alexa LF, the large format, which is 36 by 25. The GFX 100 can actually give you a video frame which is larger than the Arri Alexa LF and in true 4K resolution. Of course, there is no RAW available. If you use an external recorder, you get a 422 at 10 bit, which is good enough for a whole lot of purpose. Just imagine the size itself. Moreover, you can also shoot this in various film simulations which are inbuilt. The most popular one is the Fujifilm Eterna. And if you're shooting externally, you can shoot it in the F-Log. Well, the cinematographer is going to love it. And Fuji has just introduced their Premista series of Cine lenses. With an adapter, you can use those lenses on this camera. Imagine the kind of quality that you can get. All this without any crop of the sensor. And moreover, you can mount it onto a gimbal too. A three-axis gimbal. Here we are using the Moza Air 2. You have to remove the EVF so that it will be able to balance better. You are ready to go in a few minutes. Let's get into the shoot. Let me put this guy into parking mode. That's it. Okay, so we are continuing to shoot the video using the GFX 100, this time in F-Log. Well, F-Log, 30p, right? Yeah. 30p. Since we are talking to a commercial photographer, an informed professional, I don't think we need to talk anything more in detail than this. Uh, we saw an interesting shot, we shot 16-bit, uh, we shot 14-bit, we shot uh, continuous uh, uh, focus in, you know, continuous uh, burst mode, and we saw some videos. Let me come back to my wish list that we left uh, midway. The most important part of that wish list was the price. The medium format cameras were getting and are getting prohibitively expensive. These days, it's a decision between whether to buy your apartment or buy a medium format camera. I suppose not any longer. The GFX 100 has, I think, come in and filled that gap and ticked all those wish list boxes too, at least for me. So, GFX 100 uh, combines uh, ease of use, great quality, both in terms of image quality and bit quality, Great array of lenses which are in affordable ranges, image stabilization in body and in the lens, in most of the lenses of course it's available and all those features that we talked about plus, plus the price. I think it has hit the sweet spot. What more can you ask for? <laughs> I was thinking, why did it happen earlier?
താസാ ഓരോന്നിനും അതിൻ്റെതായ സമയമുണ്ട് മോനെ 